Hey everyone, it's me, Crazy Mario Bros, and today I'm here on the Crazy Luigi Bros channel because I want to remake a video that I made about a year ago. So there was a video on this channel that was a thumbnail tutorial, however, I'm deciding to remake it because there were some things that I got actually wrong in the video. Like, for instance, the way that I was recording the video actually prevented you guys from seeing some of the things I was doing on screen, so I think that's fixed now. So, now that those problems are fixed, I'm going to be teaching you guys how I make my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. Before we get into this video, this channel is really close to 40,000 subscribers. Subscribers. So if you're not already subscribed, just make sure you're subbed to this channel. You might not be like you might think you are and you might know me from my main channel But this is my second channel. So even if you think you are just just make sure to check if you are also get this video to whatever Like goal is on the screen. Just like the video. It helps anyways I'm gonna be doing something a little different in this one I'm not actually going to be making a new videos thumbnail since I have a lot of ideas and I don't really want to make the thumbnails right now So instead I'm actually gonna be remaking some of my older thumbnails I have three videos listed here Which are actually from my most popular videos list and I'm gonna be remaking the thumbnails for each of these just so I can show you guys how I make them. We're gonna be starting off with missing part one since out of these three it's the most simple so yeah let's just get to it. So this is the thumbnail for missing part one and we're going to be trying to recreate this. So the first step is to make a new photoshop project. I recommend using 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080 however I mostly recommend sticking to 720 because it makes the file size smaller and I think YouTube has a cap on that I don't really know. I just know that 720s work for me. You don't need your thumbnails in super crisp quality all that matters is that people know what's going on just don't make it in real low quality that's all i'm saying so once you have your photoshop project open you want to get the pictures of the characters that you're actually going to be using in the thumbnail as you can see here is where i upload all of my pictures on my plushie so i can pick whichever one i want from here so for mario i can probably pick this one since i think it works if i can give tips about taking pictures of your plushies first of all you want to keep your fingers out of the way like make sure that your fingers aren't actually in the way of the shape of the plushie it makes cropping a lot easier and it just makes it look better overall i recommend taking pictures of your plushies either in really bright rooms or in the bathroom personally for me i take my pictures in the bathroom because my bathroom has really bright lights in it and it just helps with the lighting if there's one tip i can give please do not use the iphone flash it looks really bad like just just please don't use the flash okay it'll make the lighting really uneven and it just it just doesn't really make any sense okay D don't don't use the flash on your camera just use whatever lighting you have that's all i'm saying my computer's not letting me drag over the file so i'll just put in photoshop all right so i got the picture of mario open in photoshop now what i will recommend is that you open your picture in a separate file instead of putting it into your actual project the reason i say this is because the size of this picture is probably way different from the size of your project and you don't want any quality loss so you want to open it in a separate file first once you're done cropping them out you can copy it over and you can mess with the size from there but you don't want any quality loss from the beginning you want to keep it as good quality as possible so we're just going to unlock the layer and now we're going to be cropping it out now personally for me i have the newest version of photoshop meaning i have the option to remove background but i will show you how to do it both ways even if you don't have this feature so first i'm going to be showing you guys the old method this is what i used when i had an older version of photoshop now i have the new one so i don't need this method anymore but some of you guys might not have the newest version so it can be useful to you so i go over here and i select the magnetic lasso tool now that i have this tool selected basically what this does is it attempts to lock onto your target as you crop around it you can do this zoomed in or zoomed out i'm gonna do it zoomed in just so i can show you guys more of what i'm doing i usually start from his head and i work my way around it so you guys see what it's doing right like i'm not the one doing this it's actually the program that's locking it around i mean i am moving my mouse around but the program is automatically making key points wherever it wants and it actually makes the process a lot easier now there are some tricky parts like this where you see how mario's mustache kind of blends in with the background this is where you have to be a little more careful so you have to be really careful on parts like this and you have to start making a lot of manual points yourself otherwise photoshop's not going to recognize what you're trying to crop out and that's not good so now that we're out of that area it gets a little more easier obviously you want to crop your fingers out because otherwise it's just going to look really stupid you don't want to have your fingers in the way it just looks really weird in the final thumbnail so i have all these points right here in order to bring the camera down however if you want to get rid of these you just press the delete button just move your mouse in the path of wherever you went and just press delete basically just go backwards wherever you went and then you can keep going as so this is another thing where it does kind of blend in a little bit and you just have to make sure to make some manual points whenever you can sometimes you have to be really precise with it and that's okay now some people do this method where they use the eraser tool however i've never really been into that i did it when i was younger but it just took a lot of time if you want to do that then that's okay but for me i just prefer methods like this now obviously you're gonna have parts like this where you have some jagged edges that's okay we're gonna fix that later as you go on it starts to get a little easier as you start to learn it more and you'll start to understand this. it took me a little while at first but i eventually got the hang of it okay we're nearing the top of his head we're right about to finish and done we finished cropping out mario now once you've gotten to this stage do not click anything however if you do click something it's okay if you accidentally click here it does get rid of your mask however you can just do Control z and you get your mask back now what you want to do is copy which is Control c or you can come up here and click copy and then what you want to do is paste in place which is Control shift and v you can also do this by coming to paste special and clicking paste in place now a really 
really useful shortcut that I've used a lot is pressing control zero, which actually puts your full image in frame. It basically fits it to your screen so you can see the full canvas. Now if done correctly, you'll see two layers where one of them is the original and one of them is the transparent. Now you want to actually hide the previous layer. And here you've got your transparent. Now you're going to notice a few things. First of all, there are these parts down here where Mario actually has some spots. What you'll do is you'll come over here and you'll click the polygonal lasso tool. You don't want to use the magnetic one since these are really small spaces and the magnetic lasso tool doesn't really do justice for those. It's good for cropping outside of things, but not inside of things. So once you've got the polygonal lasso tool, you'll want to just select wherever you're trying to crop out like so. The polygonal tool works through lines, meaning it's actually sometimes easier. However, I don't really use this for cropping out plushies because it would mean that I would have to do everything manually. So now that I've gotten rid of both of those areas, there are multiple things that we have to do. The first thing I would do is come up to the image tab and I would mess with these three settings, auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. I would mess with these to see if they make your image look better. So by clicking auto tone, nothing really happens. By clicking auto color, something does happen. However, I don't really like the look of this. It kind of makes them too blue, so I'm going to undo that. And auto contrast doesn't usually do much unless your image really sucks, so I don't know. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It just, it usually doesn't do anything for my images. Now, if you're nitpicky like me, you usually want to fix up your PNGs since my Mario looks really crappy. I usually fix them up every time. So what I'll do is come over here and select the spot healing brush tool, and I'll start fixing up some of the imperfections. This is what all models on Instagram do. I just leaked the government secret. Okay, so once you've gotten rid of the details that don't make your plushie look like you bought it at a Kmart, now it's time for coloring. Usually I'll come over here and select the dodge tool and I'll start to brighten up the plushie. It doesn't really matter where, just anywhere that you think it should be brightened. I'll brighten up his overalls a little bit, but not too much. Just the areas that look like they should be brightened. And maybe his shoes a little bit. Alright, so now that Mario's brightened, you want to come over here and select the sponge tool. Come up here to mode and select saturate. By default, I think it's supposed to be desaturate, but you want to come over and select saturate. Now this is actually how I add saturation to specific parts of my images without actually saturating the entire thing. So I'm going to saturate the hat a little bit since it is red. It should be really saturated. I'm going to saturate his M a little bit. going to saturate his eyes, obviously, because his eyes are beautiful. going to saturate his overalls, but not too much because I don't want it to look stupid. His shoes are pretty much a mixed bag. You sometimes don't need to, but sometimes it's a little bit necessary. And the last thing I'll do is select the magic wand tool and I'll select around him. I'll go up here to the select menu. I'll go to modify and I'll select smooth. Now for a full image, I'll usually make the sample radius 45 pixels. However, if you're doing this in your main project, which has a smaller aspect ratio, I'd recommend making this 15 pixels. So once you press okay, it actually changes the outline a little bit. Now what you want to do is press the delete button. Usually I do this about two to three times, which I'm going to do right now. And here is the third time. Now when you zoom in on the image, it doesn't really have jagged edges anymore. Notice how smooth the edges are. So now this image is complete. We're going to select this layer. We're going to copy with control C and we're going to go over here and we're going to press control V, which pastes Mario in the project. However, he's way too big. So you're going to want to resize him. Now that Mario is a little more resized, I actually remember that in the original thumbnail, he's facing to the right. So I actually want to go over here and flip horizontal. So that way he's facing this way. Now the text for the original thumbnails at the top. However, I'm going to be working with that later because I want to get Luigi first. For Luigi, I want to use this image. So I'm going to put that in the Photoshop right now. So now that I have Luigi here, I'm going to be doing the exact same process, except I'm going to be doing the other method. This is the newer method, which if you have a newer version of Photoshop, it makes things a lot easier. So I'm going to be unlocking the layer again. However, I'm actually going to be coming over here and right clicking and I'm going to be clicking duplicate layer. It's going to ask you what to name the layer. It doesn't actually matter. You can just click okay. Unless you actually care about organization, which I really don't. So it doesn't really matter to me that I have these two layers named that. So you want to come up here and go to the button that says remove background. Make sure you have the top layer selected and not the bottom. And especially make sure that you don't have both of them selected because you only want one layer to have the background removed. So come up here and click remove background. Just wait a few seconds or possibly, I don't know, maybe more than that. After it does its thing, you'll see that it has a mask on it. Now you want to hide the previous layer and you want to see how accurate it is. Now I actually got really lucky with this that the image is very accurate. Now it does have a few inconsistencies like how the mustache wasn't actually finished when it came to the cropping but it doesn't really matter. I mean you can just fix it with the polygonal tool. Just do something like this. Just cut out that extra edge and there you go. So from here I'll just use the polygonal tool to cut out little inconsistencies such as this thing right here. I'll also use the polygonal tool to take out my hand because again you don't want to have your hand or your fingers or anything visible in your picture. So now that I'm pretty much done cropping out the hand now we can get to the next few steps. Now you'll notice that whenever you try and edit things with this image for example when you try and use the spot healing tool to get rid of a detail you'll notice it doesn't actually do anything the reason for this is because masking in photoshop actually prevents you from doing stuff like this don't worry there's a quick and easy fix to this all you have to do is make a new layer right click it and click merge down click apply on this pop-up and there you go the layer is fixed now you can make whatever edits you want to it so i'm just going to be doing the rest of what i was doing last time all right so now that luigi is finished i can control c which copies him and then i can control v into this project again we're going to resize him since obviously he's not going to be that big in this thumbnail. Imagine if this was the final thumbnail. Once you're done resizing him, which I think I'm
I'm gonna have him like this maybe. Now you wanna get a background because obviously you don't want a white background. Now from the looks of it, the background of this image is a rainy sidewalk. So I'm gonna look for that. Rainy sidewalk. Now some things that I'd recommend for finding images is I would come to the tools tab on Google. I would go to size and click large. This makes sure that you have a large quality image. Since you don't want a really small image since that would make it really low quality, obviously. Now a lot of these images aren't really doing it justice. So I'm gonna look up something different. I think I literally just found the background. There is no way. Guys, I think that's literally the background. Oh my God. Okay, well that makes this video 20 times better. Now we're gonna paste in our background and make sure that it's behind our characters. That way it's not in the way of the characters because obviously you wanna have them in view. Now normally for this type of thumbnail, I would adjust their lighting to fit the background. You know, I probably make them a little darker because this is a darker background. However, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not really gonna do that. So now we're gonna add the object. So when you look at the original thumbnail, Nail. Luigi's holding this little I I don't really know what this is actually but I'll figure it out Mario's not holding anything however I use the PNG of Mario holding something so I might as well add some of this thumbnail maybe it'll be like an I'm sorry note or something it's called a hobo stick okay I guess we're gonna look up hobo stick now in order to find actual transparent images you want to come over to the tools tab again click color and click transparent this will make sure that you get a real transparent image guys I'm telling you we are on a hot streak today we're finding the exact images so you want to right click and click save image as the reason you want to save the image is so that it actually saves as a transparent image because if you just try and copy it over it's not going to be transparent unless you're on a mac or something i think it works like that so you want to resize this object so that it fits your canvas actually i'm probably going to do some things to this image i'm going to fix the outline since it's a little lower quality going to smoothen it a little bit and last but not least i'm going to do sharpen so to do sharpen you come up to filter you go to sharpen and you click sharpen it, it, it was kind of obvious usually i sharpen images a few times to make sure that they get to the best quality possible however you don't want to overdo sharpen because it'll just make it look really crappy so i'm going to flip this horizontal horizontally that way I can put it like that. So you guys check it out. It's Luigi with this hobo stick or whatever it's actually called. I feel like that's not the actual term. Now usually what I'll do is I'll add a really light drop shadow to my character. So I'll come over here and I'll click drop shadow. Now obviously our drop shadow is not going to look like this. It's not going to be this dark. It's not going to be this solid. We actually want to go over to size and we want to increase that. That way it makes it more blurry. You want to reduce spread as much as you can but not too much since otherwise your shadow is not going to be that visible. And usually you want to turn the opacity a little bit down that way your shadow isn't just super visible. You want to have it there but not like distracting either now since i usually do this to multiple objects what i'll do is i will hold the alt key and i will drag it to another layer and then i'll let go now you can see that the same effect was applied to mario without me really doing anything we're gonna apply the same thing to the hobo stick and we're actually probably gonna lower it a little bit i'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit more on this one since the shadow was more obvious there it's a thinner object meaning that the shadow was bound to be more visible now we're gonna find out what mario's gonna hold i'm sorry no okay i'm not really finding anything useful now we're gonna search up crumpled no this image could work now we're gonna resize it and put it in Mario's hand. I'm gonna be using a different font to make it look like it's handwriting. I'm gonna type, I'm sorry. Gonna resize it, put it on the paper. I'm gonna actually look for another font since I think I have more convincing fonts. I think this one works better. Gonna make it bigger now that we have a different one. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna be editing facial expressions. As you can see in the original thumbnail, Mario has a little bit of a sad face while Luigi, he, it's not really visible, but I think he's supposed to be angry. So we're gonna be giving Luigi an angry face and we're gonna be giving Mario a sad face. Now there are multiple methods of doing this. However, I'm gonna be showing you guys two methods that I personally use. The most popular one is liquify. Now you want to come up to filter and click liquify. Now you've probably seen a lot of people use liquify before. It's basically when you kind of stretch the image a little bit. So you got to adjust your brush size to be whatever you want. Then you can pretty much warp the image to your liking. So I can make Mario look a little more sad right here. So you see now Mario's eyes look a little more sad. The other method of doing this is to select the polygonal tool and you basically want to select wherever you want his eyelids to be. So I'm going to be selecting around here and then you want to get the spot healing tool and you want to just kind of brush into it. You want to keep doing it until there's no more screw ups like this. Now we're going to do the same to the other eye. All right, there we go. Now, personally for me, I'm going to undo this since the liquify actually did it better. Usually either method can do whatever they want. There's some instances where you need one over the other. So for this, I'm going to be sticking with liquify. Now we're going to be doing the same to Luigi where in order to do the angry face, we're going to be zooming in. We're going to be scrolling over and we're going to be doing this to his eye. Now you want to make sure you do it correctly. Don't make it look really stupid. You know, just something like that. That looks fine. Maybe if you want, you can make him look really angry like that. You know, push up his eyelids a little bit. It makes him look a little madder. There we go. We got the facial expressions down. Now, the last thing we're going to be doing is text. Now, the font that I use in my thumbnails is Myriad Variable Concept, and the specific setting that I used is Black Semi Condensed, right down here. Now, I'm going to be making the text color white, and I'm going to be making the text now. Missing part one. Now, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to actually click Stroke first. Now, usually, I'll put 10, and then I'll come down to Drop Shadow. I'll add a little bit of a Drop Shadow. The Drop Shadow on the text can be more obvious. It doesn't really matter, just as long as it's not distracting. And now, you can make the text whatever size you want. It doesn't really matter. Now, for the sake of this thumbnail, I'm actually going to be moving Luigi over a little bit since there is actually 
be more room to work with. Gonna be making Mario a little bigger here since I can. Gonna move the hobo stick down a little bit. That way you can still see it. I'm actually gonna overlap it with the note. There we go. I think this thumbnail's finished. One out of three done. Now the next one I'm gonna be remaking is Bowser Jr.'s Nintendo Switch. So this is the original thumbnail. Obviously, I have done some retouching on it since I first made it. However, it's mostly stayed the same. First thing I'm actually gonna do for this one is finding a background, which from the looks of it is just a little Mario sky background. Wait, not sky. I meant a Mario course. I'm gonna be using this image. Gonna stretch it out by holding shift. That's another thing that you guys might need to know. It really depends what type of Photoshop version you're using, but for me, I have to hold shift to stretch it out. So yeah, gonna press control zero to put the full thing in frame. And now we're gonna be doing Junior's Nintendo Switch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add some vibrance to the background. That way it makes it more colorful, which I probably should have done to the last one. So I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah, see, now it's more colorful. I like it. Should probably do that to the hobo stick as well. There we go. Now first I'm gonna actually add the text. That way I can get that out of the way. I'm gonna copy and paste the text. Placing doesn't really matter since I'll figure out where Bowser Jr. goes later. I'm gonna actually move it up a little bit just to make sure that they're placed properly. I might end up blurring this background a little bit, but whatever. Now, since I don't really feel like cropping out a new PNG, I'm gonna look for a thumbnail on my channel where Junior has both of his arms out. I can probably use the PNG from the Game of Life video, so I'm gonna open that right now. All right, I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna copy it over. I'm gonna horizontally flip him, even though it'll look ugly. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> this is just a test thumbnail. Now, you can see he looks a little blurry, meaning that you can add some sharpness to it. However, like I said, don't overdo it because then once you overdo it, it starts to look like this and it's just, it's really bad. It's really ugly. I'm gonna fix the drop shadow on him since it's a little too obvious. There we go. Gonna get some pictures of the Joy-Con. Gonna use the remove background tool to remove the background. However, you can also use the magic wand tool. Either of them works. I mean, I have to use it anyway because it didn't actually catch these spots right here. Gonna use a little bit of sharpen since it came out blurry. Gonna copy this one into a new layer so I can have them both in separate layers. And I'm gonna position them in Junior's hand. I'm gonna move this text over a little bit so that I can give this red Joy-Con some room. Gonna add some vibrance to it to make them more colorful. I'll do that a little bit to Bowser Jr. too since he is in need of some. Yeah, I might actually end up adding a little bit of blur to this. So usually I'll come up to the filter tab. I'll go to blur and I'll click Gaussian blur. It doesn't really matter what you do here. Just do it until it looks good. So for me, this looks fine. Now I'm gonna add in two more characters, which were Mario and Bowser. I got Mario right here. Gonna place him right there. And I got Bowser, which I'm gonna place down, uh, down here. Gonna apply the drop shadows to some of these objects like so. And there we go. I think this thumbnail is complete. Obviously it doesn't look as good as the original and I did actually forget to put the switch. However, I don't really think it matters. I think this looks pretty good. Now we're on to the last thumbnail, which is Mario and Luigi's phone problem. So this is what the original thumbnail looks like. We're going to be trying to recreate this. Obviously, you know me, I'm going to be reusing images from my past thumbnails. These are the images that I use for the Mario and Luigi thumbnails. I'm going to fix the drop shadows a little bit. Now I'm going to add in the text that I usually add. Now I'm actually going to be differentiating this from the original thumbnail since I realized that the thumbnail doesn't even say Mario and Luigi. So I'm just going to be fixing that. I'm going to move them down a little bit so that they're not in the way. Usually I add colors to these types of text. So I'm going to be doing so with Mario and Luigi's. Probably going to overlap them with the text a little bit since it, it doesn't really matter. going to be copying this over into a new text thing. I'm going to be putting phone problem. I'm going to be making this yellow since I usually like using yellow. So now that we've got the text perfect, now we're going to be adding the phone. I'm going to be putting an iPhone 12 Pro Max since I'm just going to make this look like it's a new thumbnail. Let's see if I can even use this image. It's got kind of a weird background where it might actually actually mess it up but let's just try it. let's remove the background and oh yeah it, it messed it up pretty badly okay so i have a new image here however this is kind of bothering me so i'm gonna get rid of that now i have a picture of a samsung phone which i'm gonna be putting like that just so i can have some room in the middle i don't actually know how i'm gonna place these guys because there's not too much room to work with i think i'm gonna use this junior now it's time to get an image of yoshi uh this is gonna be difficult i mean i think it was difficult in the original thumbnail anyway but this is still pretty bad gonna apply the shadow to them and there we go now last thing we need is a background which from the looks of it, the original background, oh, it was yellow. Well, we can make it blue, it doesn't matter. Now, since this was the background of the original, ooh, wait, actually, this looks pretty nice. Can I use this image? There we go, there's the image. I'm going to use that as my background. Obviously, I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna make it look more colorful. I'm going to do that like so, and there we go, I think this works. If there is one last detail I can add, it would obviously be their eyes, because you can see that they look mad in the original thumbnail. So, I'm gonna see if Liquify will do the trick. All right, there's Mario, and there's Luigi. All right, I'm not very good at liquefy but i mean 
I, I tried, I guess. I, I tried. I mean, again, this is just a test, but whatever. All right. Well, today I decided to recreate three of my most popular videos in thumbnail form. I got to resize that. I'm sorry. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Hope it was interesting to you. If you're not already, make sure you've liked this video and subscribe to the channel. If you've watched for this long, comment the word that's on screen. And if there's one last thing I can say, I will be leaving a link in the description to a crazy Mario Bros. thumbnail pack. Now, I actually already had this months ago. However, I think a lot of people lost the link to it. So the link to the thumbnail pack will be in the description of this video for anybody to use if they want to make crazy Mario Bros. thumbnail. However, I recommend that you don't use these images for your original plush videos. I want you guys to have your own original pictures for your own original plush videos. So if you're making your own plush videos, don't use my images. Just crop out your own. I showed you guys how to do it in this video. So I recommend that you guys go out and do that. However, I really like fan thumbnails. So if you want to make fan thumbnails, send them to me on my Instagram. Post them publicly, tag me in them, put hashtag crazy Mario Bros. Do whatever you got to do. I always like seeing those and I will like your post if you make a crazy Mario Bros. fan thumbnail. I love seeing that stuff. You can also join my Discord server where I have a channel where you can actually put video ideas. I believe you can upload images to that channel, meaning that you can put your video idea there if you want as well. And yeah, I hope this thumbnail tutorial helped you guys. A lot of you guys were asking me to remake it since there were some things that I forgot in it. So here you go. Here's the remake. All right. Thanks for watching. Follow my Twitter or something. It's 1249 in the morning. I'm tired. I might go to sleep. Leave suggestions in the comments for what more you guys want from the Crazy Luigi Bros channel because I really want to post more videos here. I just don't really know what to post. And yeah, see ya.